this video, we shall see a short and brief development of multiple Riemann integration. All the hard work has been done way back in real analysis 1 when we studied the Riemann integral in terms of upper sums and lower sums. The theory in several dimensions is not that different. We begin with the definition. Definition. Let i1 dot 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 i n be intervals in R. So these intervals i1 to i n could be open, closed, bounded, unbounded, half open, half closed, it really doesn't matter. They could even be points, we even allow that. So let i1 to i n be intervals in R, a n dimensional interval in R n is the product, product of i1 dot 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 i n. So a uh, n dimensional interval is nothing but a product of intervals in R. We say, we say the n dimensional interval, interval i is open respectively closed, bounded, if each ij has the same property, has the same property. Okay. So, we consider n dimensional intervals which are just products of intervals in R. So, as an interesting and simple exercise, show that, show that an n dimensional interval i is compact if and only if each ij is compact. This is actually a trivial exercise and it follows rather immediately from the theory of compactness we have developed elaborately for metric spaces. Okay, so given, so another definition, this is the important definition of measure of an interval. So henceforth, for the sake of brevity, I will not keep saying n dimensional interval, I will just say interval i and leave it to you to infer from context whether it is an interval in R or a general n dimensional interval. Given an interval, interval i equal to i1 cross dot 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 i n, we define, we define the measure the measure of i mu i to be as you can guess mu of i1 into mu of i2 into dot 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 mu of i n where where mu of i j is just the length of the interval length of the interval Since we allow intervals to degenerate to single points and also allow infinite length intervals, this product could be zero, this product could be infinite as well. Note that if one of the intervals is a single point, but another interval is an interval of length infinity, then the in the product interval will still have measure zero according to this definition that sort of makes sense because what will happen is if one of the intervals degenerate to a point when you take the product you don't get an n dimensional object you get sort of a lower dimensional object so defining the measure of such a lower dimensional object to be zero makes perfect sense okay so we have now defined what the measure or length of a general n dimensional interval is. Once this is done, the definition of a Riemann integral is rather simple. So we will all have some more sequence, uh, a sequence of definitions, some more definitions. Definition, let i equal to i1 dot 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 i n be an open interval. Okay, 
uh, sorry let i1 to in be any interval it doesn't matter be an interval a partition partition of i is just a product p1 cross dot 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 pn where pj is a partition of ij so a partition of an n dimensional interval is nothing more than a product of partitions of the intervals in r so a simple picture will illustrate what is going on suppose we are taking a two dimensional uh, interval that is just a product of two intervals so in general it will look like a rectangle so a partition is just given by a product of partitions of the two intervals so let's take a partition p1 of the interval which i have drawn on the x axis and another partition which is there on the y axis then together you take the product so that means uh, of course the end points are always there in the partition so what will happen is you will consider a sort of grid like this when you take the partition when you take the product of the partitions you get something like this these are all the points that will be there in the partition so yeah to prevent you from going to sleep i will not complete this picture so note that each of these partitions in each one of these axes determines some sub intervals so you have these sub intervals determined by this and sub intervals determined by this okay and the product of those would give you sort of smaller rectangles like this so that i can draw so you will have sort of rectangles determined by this partition so um let me make a remark each partition of an interval interval such that pj has mj points that is i am writing the partition p as the product p1 cross dot 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 pn where each pj is a partition of ij assume that pj has mj points then then the partition p partition p determines determines m1 m2 dot 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 mj intervals or rather sub intervals sub intervals of i so if you have a partition p write it as a product p1 cross dot 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 pn if pj contains mj points then there are m1 times m2 times dot 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 sorry this is not mj this is mn this is mn sub intervals determined by this partition so each sub interval will be determined in the way we have defined in this picture okay now usually what we will do is we will just we will label label these these sub intervals sub intervals by a1 dot 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 am where m is just m1 m2 dot 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 mn okay so now that we have defined what it means for uh, a partition to determine sub intervals we can move on to the next step and define the riemann integral definition definition let i be a compact compact interval okay let f from i to r be a bounded function bounded function for any partition p 
partition P, we say we say an expression of the type summation j running from 1 to m mu of a j times f of t j where a 1 to a m are the sub intervals determined by p sub intervals determined by p and t j is some point in a j an expression of the type summation j running from 1 to m mu of a j f of t j where these a j's are the various sub intervals that are determined by the partition so each a j for instance in this case this can be a 1 a 2 a 3 you order them in some way it really does not matter there will be finitely many of them you order them in some way call them a j's you take the measure of uh, a j and multiply it by f of t j where t j is some point so an expression of this type is called is called is called a Riemann sum so a Riemann sum is just you consider a partition you sample points from each sub interval determined by the partition evaluate the given function at that at that particular set of points and then multiply it by the corresponding measure of the sub intervals and take the sum that's called the Riemann sum okay it's called a Riemann sum we say f is Riemann integrable Riemann integrable on i if we can find if we can find a number number capital a such that such that for each epsilon greater than 0 there is a partition partition p epsilon satisfying the following somewhat complicated looking condition for any finer partition finer partition p so finer partition just means this partition p contains p epsilon okay so you have essentially added more points to each one of the sub intervals uh, not each one of the sub intervals you have added more points to each one of the pj's determined by p epsilon so for any finer partition p uh, we have we have the Riemann sum, the Riemann sum, Riemann sum coming from P to B less than epsilon. So there is a lot to unpack here. Let us to uh, F in an effort to make our understanding clear what we can do is we can introduce some notation usually notation seems to overburden things but sometimes having a clean notation can make us understand what is going on so let us give an expression for this we will call this the Riemann sum so we, let us call it S F P and since this Riemann sum depends on the choice of points we can call it T1 to T m okay let us give it this notation. So, here the understanding is that you take the sum of the products of the intervals with the values of f at these various points in the final slot. Okay, So, that is the notation here. What this is saying is for any partition p, we have the Riemann sum coming from p to be less than epsilon. That just means s p f t1 to tm is less than epsilon for any choice for any choice of tj in aj okay so what this is saying is no matter how you sample the points in the sub intervals the riemann sum always turns out to be uh, sorry i made a mistake um, 
what I want to say is I completely forgot the integral value minus a is less than epsilon. Okay. So what I want to say is uh, given any finer partition p of this p epsilon, no matter how you sample the points t1 to tm from this partition p, when you take the Riemann sum with respect to that choice of points, the absolute value of that minus a is less than epsilon. Okay, then we say that f is Riemann integrable on a uh, on i and we say integral of i f is equal to a. So the Riemann integral in several variables exist if you can make the values of Riemann sums arbitrarily close to a particular value which we have called a. Okay, so there is really nothing much happening. Uh, you would have seen a similar definition of the Riemann integral in a standard course on real analysis, or at least you would have seen a de an equivalent definition in terms of upper sums and lower sums. So let me just leave you with a somewhat elaborate exercise that will really test your understanding of basic analysis. So this I'm going to call it a theorem but it's actually an exercise for you to work out. This will really test your understanding. So let I be a compact interval, be a compact interval. Let F from I to R be a function. For any partition, partition p of i define define ufp to be summation capital mi mu of ai where where a1 to am so let the i run from 1 to m a1 to am are the subintervals determined by p subintervals determined by p and capital mi is supremum of f on ai okay so this is called the upper sum the riemann upper sum or rather the darbu upper sum Darbu upper sum. Okay. Similarly, similarly define LFP, the Darbu lower sum. I'm going to leave it to you to define LFP. It's exactly like what we did in real analysis one. Okay. Then F is Riemann integrable, Riemann integrable if and only if for each epsilon greater than zero, we can find a partition, partition P such that UFP minus LFP is less than epsilon. So you would, uh, uh, if you are the sort of student who has a very good memory, you will remember that we proved that a function f in the real line or defined on a compact interval in a real line is integrable if and only if this is true. However, there we had defined the notion of Riemann integrability also in terms of upper sums and lower sums. In fact, what we do is we take the infimum of all upper sums where you infimize over every possible partition and you take the supremum of all lower sums where you take the supremum over all possible partitions and you say the function f is Riemann integrable if and only if the supremum of the lower sums agree with the infimum of the upper sums. So there the definition was slightly different. Here the definition is in terms of choosing points from each sub interval, sampling points and sort of considering the product of the measure and the value at that point. So there's a subtle difference between the earlier result in one dimension and the result we have here. Nevertheless, this exercise requires a bit of work but is really going to 
reinforce your understanding of this entire course real analysis 1 and real analysis 2. So I want you to work out this exercise in detail. Please refer to real analysis 1 to get some ideas of how to tackle this. Okay, so the final uh, thing I want to say about multiple Riemann integration is another theorem which is not that hard to show all the hard work has been done in real analysis 1. This is sort of the Riemann Lebig Riemann Lebig criteria criteria for integrability. Okay, so let f from i to r be a bounded function be a bounded function then f is Riemann integrable of course here i is a compact interval f is Riemann integrable if and only if the set of discontinuities discontinuities of f is a set of measure 0. What do I mean by a set of measure 0? Well, that's the final definition of this video. Definition, a set S subset of Rn is said to be a set of measure 0, 0 if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can cover we can cover s by countably many intervals whose net measure whose net measure is less than epsilon just as before you can show that any function uh, sorry any set uh, which is countable is going to be a set of measure 0 and uh, you can also sh show this interesting exercise which is related to the remark I made before if if uh, i equal to i1 to i n and some i j is a point then i is a set of measure 0. You can try to show this. Okay, so a set of measure 0 is something that can be covered by sets such that the net measure of those sets is going to be less than epsilon and um, these sets have to be intervals because we have defined measure only for intervals so far. So this was a brief overview of multiple Riemann integration. In the next and final video of the course, we will have a brief overview of multiple Lebesgue integration. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on multiple Riemann integration.